Hi everybody, this is Dr. Osborne. In the last video, I covered the causes of the First World War, and this week I'm going to tell you about how the United States became involved. First, let's review the causes of the war. They are militarism, nationalism, imperialism, and the alliance system. The countries of Europe went to war after the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand. He was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. By the end of the first week in August 1914, Europe was at war, although the United States remained officially neutral. Now I need to explain a couple of things before we go any further. Although we think of the United States as one unified country, this feeling didn't always exist. In 1914, there were still regional divides separating the country. Remember, the Civil War had only been over for about 50 years. Many people could still recall that conflict or had parents or grandparents who were involved in the war. Sectional divides still existed, like those between the North and the South. Although in 1914, the most obvious difference was between those living in the East and the West. Many people living in the East, especially those working in banking or industry, wanted the United States to join the war on the side of Great Britain. They believed that the country stood to benefit economically because we would be producing lots of supplies and, and materials that the soldiers would need. We also share a culture with Great Britain. Those living in the Midwest and the West had a different attitude towards the war. They wanted the United States to stay out of what they perceived to be a foreign conflict. Many people living in the Midwest were farmers or shopkeepers, and they understood that they could not benefit from the war. Many people living in the Midwest were of German heritage as well. They didn't want the United States to go to war against Germany, the country of their ancestors. Although the United States was still neutral in 1914, some Americans joined the militaries of England or Canada because they believed in what these countries were fighting for. Others saw it as an adventure of a lifetime, an opportunity to leave home for the first time. Other people wanted to assist with the relief efforts. They wanted to help wounded soldiers. For example, Dr. Mary Crawford went to France in 1914 to work in a hospital. Some poets and authors also served as ambulance drivers in Europe. A number of Americans believed that although the United States was neutral for the moment, they couldn't stay out of the war forever. We were already sending supplies and loans to Great Britain and her allies. Then something happened that nearly drew the United States into war. On May 7, 1915, a German submarine, or U-boat, torpedoed and sank the British steamship Lusitania. Over 100 Americans died. Because of that, there were calls for the United States to declare war on Germany. It was later revealed that the Lusitania was carrying ammunition, giving Germany a reason to sink that ship. Germany's submarine warfare was causing problems for the United States. We were still trading with Europe, and the main way to transport goods at the time was by ship. Germany had promised to leave our ships alone because we were neutral. However, in February 1917, Germany began practicing something called unrestricted submarine warfare. This meant it could attack any ship, including neutral ones, if it thought a ship was carrying food and supplies to Great Britain. The war had reached a stalemate. A number of large battles had been fought that lasted several months and resulted in hundreds of thousands of deaths. Germany wanted to defeat Great Britain before the United States could become involved in the war, but it was also facing food shortages. One strategy that Germany adopted was to distract the United States. The U.S. Army had become involved in some skirmishes along the southern border. Some Mexican rebels, led by a man named Pancho Villa, had crossed into the United States and killed 18 American soldiers and civilians in New Mexico. President Wilson then ordered, ordered General Pershing and 5,000 troops into Mexico to try to capture Pancho Villa. They were unsuccessful, but the German foreign minister, Arthur Zimmerman, saw an opportunity. He later sent a coded telegram to the German ambassador in Mexico. 
Zimmerman proposed that Germany restore territory to Mexico, which it had lost in a, in a war in the 1840s. These lands consisted of New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas. Germany would restore this territory to Mexico if Mexico made an alliance with Germany. The German ambassador was to present this proposal to the leader of Mexico, Venustiano Carranza. But the British intercepted the telegram and passed it to the United States. The calls for the U.S. to declare war on Germany were louder than ever, but President Wilson kept the country out of war for a few more months. But the attacks on American ships increased until Wilson was forced to make a decision. He called for a special joint session of Congress for April 2nd, and that evening he rode to the Capitol building to give his address. Before the entire Congress and a gallery packed with journalists and visitors, he laid out the reasons why the United States could no longer remain neutral. I want to read you the conclusion of his address because it is so powerful. President Wilson concluded his address to Congress by saying, it is a distressing and oppressive duty, gentlemen of the Congress, which I have performed in thus addressing you. There are, it may be, many months of fiery trial and sacrifice ahead of us. It is a fearful thing to lead this great peaceful people into war, into the most terrible and disastrous of all wars, civilization itself seeming to be in the balance. But the right is more precious than peace, and we shall fight for the things which we have always carried nearest our hearts for democracy, for the right of those to submit to authority, to have a voice in their own governments, for the rights and liberties of small nations, for a universal dominion of right by such a concert of free peoples as shall bring peace and safety to all nations and make the world itself at last free. To such a task we can dedicate our lives and our fortunes, everything that we are and everything that we have with the pride of those who know that day has come when America is privileged to spend her blood and her might for the principles that gave her birth and happiness and the peace which she has treasured. God helping her, she can do no other. President Wilson's private secretary, Joseph Tumulty, later recalled the president's reaction. For a while, he sat silent and pale in the cabinet room. At last, he said, Think, it, think what it was that they were applauding. He was speaking of the people who were lined along the streets on his way to the Capitol. My message today was a message of death for our young men. How strange it seems to applaud that. Four days later, on April 6, 1917, Congress voted to declare war on Germany. The United States was now officially in the war. In the next video, I'll share with you what the home front looked like. You'll find out about war propaganda, food conservation, anti-German hysteria, and women's contributions to the war effort. See you next week!